We didn't want to be ruled by the, the reigning view that the animal is a product, despite the holy cow banner that is waved a great deal in the country. If a cow has the slightest injury, when you see it as a product, you immediately just kill it because it has no value. If it doesn't give milk anymore, you just abandon it. If it's a fracture on the leg of a donkey, you just get rid of it, based on the utility of an animal for you, the human being. My little family with my wife and daughter about 15 years ago came here as tourists and saw a problem that no one was dealing with, injured street animals that were not being looked after and rescued. No one was doing this. 15 years ago, we lived in a small village and we talked some nice folks into using a small piece of a village property to start our first shelter and we were there for six years and it was a great little shelter up to 80 animals. We really matured, we made all the mistakes, things that you don't think about as starting. I don't know about the septic situation and waste uh, d disposal and management and what are the best paints you use on a cage and what are the diseases that are airborne uh, that, that move around a, a shelter. So all these things had to be learned. Let's stand up together. Do we have? Yeah. One, two, three. Oh, very good. Very good. Oh, yes, sir. Yes. The uh, animal, at the end of the day, does not care much about spay neuter. What a dog really would like people to take care of is mange, the little bug that gets under their skin and has them scratching their whole life away. It turns out the veterinary programs in India are based solely on farmed animals. So we thought, oh great, we have our first doctor. We got one here and he signed a deal and he says, I don't know anything about dog medicine. We had to immediately send him out to go to another shelter in Jaipur and spend a month there to learn spay neuter and to learn the medical protocols surrounding a dog. The real upside of it is that we learned it from the heart. We didn't learn it out of a textbook. We learned it from the problems that we met. So we, we were ready to deal with whatever animal was injured. We didn't have a, a species preference. Those challenges, why sometimes it felt like, oh God, the more you see, the more the weight feels on your shoulder. But on the other hand, you know it should teach you if you've got a reasonable heart and a good brain that you're on to a, a worthy problem. People tend to shy away from the hardest problems. Loving your individual pets and not looking at all about the feedlots of the animals you know, in the world. If we all give up hope, why shouldn't the next person? There was actually, and still is, a, and, and a, a good government veterinary program. But we found out, sadly, it is only for farmed animals. And, and so it's, it's not just that it doesn't deal with dogs and cats, but the perspective was governmental. We had no background with animals. Some experience in NGO work in America and Australia. We didn't know Hindi, we didn't know the cultural history of the country. If no one was dealing with this problem, there was, there was no complication. Anything would be better than the nothing that was going on at the time. Educational problems. Uh, in fact, we ultimately realized education was going to be a growing portion of our budget year by year and we now have a much bigger budget we're up to nearly 18 20 thousand u.s dollars a month but that's 50 workers what's expensive is not just rescue and release 
care is what's expensive. As soon as we had our first blind dog and our first donkey with a multiple fracture, it was like, wait a minute, this is not rescue and release. We're a shelter now. And a shelter has a different idea to it about space, about organization, about the kind of medicine. As of today, we have rescued over 60,000 street animals. Thanks for coming to Animal Aid Charitable Trust.